Yeah, Do you guys think that most people should uh, take up some weightlifting or, or take some sort of page from weightlifting? Like we, we, we promote bodybuilding quite a bit, but it's kind of obvious that like kind of anyone can do bodybuilding. Anyone can go in the gym and do some curls and try some push downs and uh, go on some of the machines. I mean, it's available from anyone that's, you know, 10 all the way until you're 70. But the Olympic lifts, they look more intimidating. Do you guys think that uh, people should, should try or strive or there, or there are particular movements in weightlifting that you think people should maybe examine or try to get into? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I, yeah, I, I think so. I mean, like, uh, you know, there's there's been people that have started. There was a guy, Dan Takahuchi, who started weightlifting. He had a 30-year career. He started at 50. And so, like, that's that's exceptional. And, like, I think a lot of people could do some form of it, you know, maybe not snatch or jerk, but you could do power cleans, right? You could do pulls, those kind of things, ballistic movements that are more explosive. I think somebody could benefit from that. If you're, if you're just talking about, like, your training for the sake of, you know, and longevity and mm -hmm. fun and enjoyment. Um, yeah, for sure. I think it's not like, it seems intimidating because there's a bit of a prerequisite, you know, you don't need to necessarily have all, yeah, there he is. Yeah. Um, you don't need to necessarily have a huge amount of like flexibility or, or coordination to do a squat or a bench press. Whereas weightlifting is like a little more than that. It's less than doing like, you know, a hammer throw or a shot put, mm. but it's, it's a little bit more than that. So it's a little bit more intimidating, but I think like CrossFit shows us like, you know, people are doing it like, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's also years ago, it was so hard to get into it because you were in a place where there was no formalized, like really good coaching. It was just a lot of like you know, my coach did it this way and his coach did it that, that, that way. And they, they sort of figured it out as they went. Now it's like on Instagram in 60 seconds, there'll be snatch tutorials. Like you mm -hmm. could learn how to snatch for free on Instagram and just watch a video and it'd, it'd be pretty good. Like you'd learn quite a bit about it. So it's not as complex as it seems. Um, but yeah, I think, I think, you know, people should try it. If it's like frustrating and it's like not enjoyable to you. Yeah. Maybe you move on, but if you can even get a little bit of traction with it, it's worth pursuing. Well, I'm curious about this because you mentioned that there's a phase in your training that you only did four or five different movements and you had an upper body weakness, right? Mm -hmm. um, lifters that are trying to get into maybe snatching or doing any type, any of those types of movements, do you think that there are any, any ways to physically prepare yourself for the demands of that type of movement? Oh yeah. I mean, that's, that's like the whole premise of like, managing uh being a coach right you're managing the sport career of somebody the first things you're doing all the strength work you do with a beginner is basically to satisfy developing strengths that they need to support the technique mm -hmm. and to strengthen areas that potentially are vulnerable to, to to injury so you know snatch grip stuff is really weird because you have wide grip overhead strength is important so you'd start off by preparing somebody to, to just do an overhead position, right? Do an overhead squat, be strong in the shoulders, be mobile, be stable. Power Project fam, this episode is brought to you by Vivo Barefoot Shoes. We've been wearing these shoes for almost a year now. They're flexible. They have a wide toe box. They allow your feet to get connected to the ground, and they will make your feet stronger. And they don't look like shit. Like a lot of these other barefoot shoes. Andrew, how can they get them? For the best barefoot shoes on the planet, and they also look really, really good, <laughs> head over to vivobarefoot.com slash powerproject. At checkout, enter promo code powerproject20 to save 20% off. Again, vivobarefoot.com slash powerproject, promo code powerproject20 to save 20% off. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. Let's go ahead and get back to this podcast. And then same with the front rack, you know, getting the elbows around, be able to actually support the weight on your chest. And then anything else like low back strength stuff. So like a lot of general kind of training, like back raises and hyper extensions, good mornings, kettlebell swings and those kind of things. And then, mm -hmm. you know, snatch grip presses and snatch grip push presses and pressing movements. And then, you know, even some like basic like curls and tricep movements, like just stuff that you basically introduce to somebody if you wanted them to have a strong, stable foundation in their upper body to be able to actually hold the weight overhead. And that's like what most of the strength training should be for beginners, right? Not front squatting to maximum 12 times a week. It should be that. So you develop the foundation and then you slowly titrate in more and more work that's actually specific. And kind of along with that, you know, you started Olympic lifting when you were 34. Most people, when they do think about being good at Olympic lifting, 
they most people would kind of assume that you should be doing it since you you've been a kid or a child. But do you think that like someone who starts Olympic lifting when they're 16 or 18, if they have been an athlete and they have good physical preparation, can they become a good Olympic lifter or a great Olympic lifter? Or is that something where you need to have been doing this since you were like six? No, I think uh, I think it's really hard. We're in a, we're we're in a weird spot here because our measurement, our metric for good is the top in the world. Mm -hmm. And what the top in the world have done traditionally is a, an interesting scenario. From my experience, actually speaking to top coaches, like the general process is take a kid when they're very young, introduce them to gymnastics and other sports and stuff. Then they start weightlifting. They might be 11 to 13. Mm -hmm. That's when they start steroids. And whoa, then, whoa. Yeah. That's when they start steroids. Yeah. And then they start training for weightlifting and they start from that day on, everything is enhanced. Peeps, we love bringing you all this fitness information and we also want to help bring that information to more people. So if you could help us out, hit that rev subscribe button and then hit the notification bell and we'll continue to bring you the heat. And I won't whisper in your ear. <laughs> Talk to you guys later.